Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement technology. This time we are going to talk about the measurement system itself, the structure of the measurement system. Okay? Last time in the introduction we said measuring is a good idea. Okay? We are recording a number, process the number. That's the task of measurement. Now, how is a measurement system looking? Yeah? What, is the, what is the structure of a measurement system? The base the core of the measurement system is the so-called sensor, right? So we have somewhere something, yeah? This, this is the sensor. Okay. Our physical quantity. The thing we want to measure, yeah, this will influence the sensor somehow. Yeah? So this here is the physical quantity. Quantity. Okay? This is influencing the sensor and uh, what is the sensor doing? Yeah. The sensor is changing some feature, some property. All right. So the sensor, the task of the sensor is to react on the influence. The physical quantity is influencing the sensor somehow, and the sensor is changing something. Yeah. The sensor is reacting to the physical quantity by changing. A feature or a property. Yeah. What might this be? Yeah. Different, all different kind of stuff. Yeah, it might be mechanical, mechanical feature. For instance, the size or the density. Something like this, mechanical feature or an electrical feature. Yeah. Electrical feature might be, I don't know, the resistance, yeah. for instance, is a big topic. Yeah. So the sensor is changing its property. All right? There are sensors out there which do produce already energy. Uh, the physical quantity is, I don't know, influencing the sensor and the sensor is reacting by producing energy. Uh, such sensors are called active sensors. Uh, so there are active ones. Produce energy. Uh, so the the change of the feature is directly observable. I don't need to power supply the sensor somehow. The sensor itself is producing energy. Yeah? And there are inactive sensors. Or passive. And these are just changing. The sensor itself looks like exactly the same, but some feature has changed and I must get this feature out of the sensor. Okay, I must power supply set the sensor somehow. Alright, it's just such just changing. But no energy produced. Okay, this is the sensor. The thing is with the sensors, those changes of the features of the properties, they are very, 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 very small and very tiny. All right. So I need to take those changes and, and make them somehow observable. Yeah? If I know this thing is moving, I don't know, three micrometers, <laughs> I need to have something which is then bringing this to a level that I can say, all right, now I see it. Okay. 
So usually there is something in there which is gaining. Eh? And something which is gaining is called an amplifier. Okay? So there's also an amplifier. The task of the amplifier is to take the signal of the sensor, yeah, record somehow the, the, the feature which was changed and gain it, yeah, to make it observable for us. Okay? So this is gain the signal. to make it observable. Okay? Zack, yeah? we need something. Yeah? We need we need to to get. Yeah? So here the sensor is giving the signal to the amplifier. Yeah? And well, that's it. If this is a passive sensor, the amplifier must get the information of the sensor out. Uh, must, you know, get it out. Yeah? Read it somehow. If the sensor is active, the signal is directly coming from the sensor. And the sensor, well, the amplifier just have to gain those, those energy which is produced somehow. Yeah? However, if it's a passive sensor, yeah, then usually the, the amplifier's task is also to make a power supply. Okay. This is mainly to get the signal out of the sensor. And the amplifier. Now, now we have a signal which we can observe. Now we can a signal which we can put, transfer to somewhere, yeah, display somewhere, and this is then the last the last thing, yeah. So then we can process. Yeah. So there might be then displays. Yeah. So maybe some analog displays, yeah. Maybe some digital displays, seven segment displays, something like this, yeah. A display. Yeah? Or what what else could we do? We could record. Yeah? Recording. This might be you know line writers or something like this. Yeah? So that we have a sheet of paper where the measurement is recorded, or maybe databases. It's recorded in a computer. This is usual nowadays, of course. Yeah. So here, these signals here, they are they are strong enough yeah, to be processed, displayed, something like this. Yeah. Recorded, displayed. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. This thing here. This. The first part, this is data recording, okay? Signal recording. Here we're recording the signal. Huh? And the other part is the processing part. There we are processing our measurement, okay? And now this amplifier has some sort of double feature, double meaning. Yeah? What is the double meaning? Well, the amplifier's task is also, you know, if the signal from the sensor is very noisy, because it's very tiny and it's very noisy then probably, yeah, so there we have a lot of crackles or noise or, or garbage overlay on the signal, yeah? then the amplifier also does some filtering. Yeah? Filter the signal. 
And this filtering, this is already part of the processing. Yeah? So it has nothing to do with the recording. The recording is done. Yeah? And if we filter it already, so process the signal, then also the amplifier has part of the signal processing. So there, here, this is why here we have an overlap. This is signal processing. Okay, this is signal processing. Usually these signals here, yeah, these are called standard signals. Yeah. It's very usual, it's very usual to have here standard signals. I'm not saying you have to have standard signals, it's very usual. Yeah. Uh, typical standard signals are, for instance, 0 to 10 volts. Yeah. So 0 would be the minimum of, the, of our measurement range and 10 volt would be the maximum of our measurement range. So if you measure, for instance, I don't know, from 0 to 100 bars, this would be 0 bars and this would be 100 bars, if it's a pressure measurement. Yeah. Or also a usual measurement is 0 to 20 milliamperes. Yeah. Then it's a current signal. It's a voltage signal, it's a current signal. All right. There are a bunch of those standard signals, Norm-Signal in German. Yeah. A bunch of those standard signals are there. Yeah. So these are unipolar, yeah, starting with 0. Then there are also live, signals, live zeros. 2 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps. Yeah. Then there are also B bipolar signals, so from minus 10 is 10 volts, yeah, or from minus 20 to 20 milliamps. Yeah. These are typical standard signals, warm signale. Yeah. Usually you can buy a measurement device with such output. Yeah. You buy I don't know, temperature, temperature measurement yeah, from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius and it's 4 to 20 milliamps. Then this would be minus 40 degrees Celsius, this would be 150 degrees Celsius and it's scaled accordingly. Okay, So these standard signals are very usual. And also the processing and displaying items, they are usually adapted to the standard signals. For instance, if you're recording this with the help of a PLC, a programmable, programmable logic controller, yeah, then there are analog input cards which can read 4 to 20 or 0 to 20 or 0 to 10 volts. Yeah. You can buy them off stock and this makes things easier to use standards. Okay. So this is the structure of a measurement signal. Okay. The basic structure of a measurement signal, how it looks like. I want to give you an example of something I'm pretty sure you know, all right? So, I'm talking about now uh, a pressure, pressure measurement system. As an example, mechanical pressure measurement system, a manometer, okay? So inside there, in some types, inside, there's something like this, looking like this, somehow G-shaped, somehow like this, and here's the connection to the outside world, okay? This is a tube, yeah? a tube. It works pretty much like those, you know, these carnival whistles where you blow in and then they will fold, uh, unfold and make a sound that if you stop blowing in, they will refold, roll back in. This is pretty much the same principle. Yeah? Because here, there's the physical quantity going inside there. Uh, and the physical quantity, we said, is the pressure. Right? 
if we apply pressure to this tube, G-shaped tube, then the G-shaped tube will change its property and will, you know, bend a little bit. Go a little bit, straighten out, like these carnival's whistles I've mentioned. Okay, I, this is now, of course, uh, too much what I draw here, but to, to illustrate the, the principle. If we apply pressure, this will try to straighten out and will move. All right. So why is this even straightened out? Because, you know, here the outside area is bigger than the inside area and so the applied force from the pressure. Pressure is force by square meter and if I have more square meters on the outside, the applied force on the outside is bigger than the applied force on the inside. Yeah, And so it will, mm, the force will stretch this yeah? until the mechanical stress is big enough to hold it in shape. Yeah? Mechanical stress, this must be of course inside the elastic area of the material used for this tube. So those changes are small, tiny. Okay. So what we need here is some sort of amplifier. And in this case, the amplifier looks like it's a gearbox simply, all right? So there's the big gears inside and small gears, yeah? And we are transferring this yeah? to a middle gear. Yeah? So the task of this gearbox here is simply to transmit the small movement here and make it big movement, right? Make it a big movement and well, there is the casing around. Of course, there's somewhere the case. Here's the, here's some, usually some thread. Yeah? And then we have the casing somehow looking like this. Okay. This is the casing, yeah? and here we have some scales. There's a scale, and there is a pointer mounted here. To this middle gear yeah? and if this is moving all right if this is moving then the pointer will point to a certain position yeah? and suddenly we have a measurement system all right a mechanical measurement system this here yeah? is the sensor yeah? the colors to fit yeah? the sensor is our our spring our tube spring here tube G-shaped spring. Yeah? Then we have an amplifier, mechanical amplifier, which is the gearbox. And then we have some display device, which is the pointer processing the signal of the gearbox. Yeah? And, and of course, the scale and the, and the property or the, the feature of the, of the spring must fit somehow. All right. Maybe you have already seen a manometer where it's a little bit shaky in the what is usually done there is that this, this internals, they are liquid filled and then we have, you usually see somewhere a small air bladder inside. Yeah? And the rest is filled with some liquid which will add friction and cause this to stand still. Yeah? So if there's little, there's noise, yeah? there's noise on there and it's shaking a little bit because the pressure is pulsating or something like this, yeah? then we would see this on the on the pointer and if it's liquid filled then it will be still yeah? so this is the this is filtering filter the signal yeah? mechanical filter add friction 
Yeah? Of course, the dynamic behavior is then not that good. All right? So this is how this, this might look like. Yeah? Make a second. So in the middle we have the window and the rest is the casing. Here we still have a thread where we can mount to our process. Okay. Yeah. What is this type of signal? It's changing a mechanical property, so it's a mechanical. Yeah. Do we have power supply? Does the sensor give energy? Yes, the sensor gives energy because of the movement. Where is this energy coming from? This energy is coming from the pressure. All right. So the pressure is usually, uh, yeah, you know, you need some energy from the process. So this is giving energy, enough energy to move those stuff. Yeah? And maybe you have already seen, if there is no pressure applied to a manometer, then the, and the manometer is already pointing to somewhere. Uh, then this is a typical case that this manometer was already destroyed, overloaded. I said, we are staying inside the hook area, so inside the elastic area of the material. If we are no longer staying, because we overload the sensor in the elastic area, but do deform this permanently, then this will not go back completely and we will stay somewhere. Huh? Then this manometer is gone. Huh? So what we've got here actually is a mechanical active sensor. Yeah. Pressure measurement, one example. All right. So this is our measurement system. Now, when we are using this, we do have a number. Huh? And this number will stay the same. If the physical quantity will stay the same, this number will stay the same. So we apply a number for a physical quantity. Yeah? But what number is this? Yeah. What I mean, I said five. Yeah. About five. We need a unit, all right? So we will display a number, yeah, which is representative a uh, uh, multiplication factor of a certain unit. Yeah. There is one meter, yeah, and if it's one and a half meters or five meters, yeah. Then it's five times one meter. Yeah? And if it's one and a half meter, it's one and a half times this meter. Yeah? So we not only need a number, we also need a unit. Right? And next video is dealing with those units. Okay? I'm sure you heard of it. However, to make this series of video complete, to round it, the, the topic, I will tell you how a unit is working. Okay? For this time, Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.